Hello and welcome to uh, this special webinar from Fat Profits. Um, my name is Roger Malik, your Head of Client Services in our Sydney head office. Uh, and joining me today is our Wealth Manager, Richard Burke. Richard, welcome to this uh, special webinar. How are you today? I'm very well. Thanks, Roger. Thanks for having me. How are you today? I'm very well and we're pretty excited to, to share a few insights on our service. So members, the reason we're doing this today is to go through the details of our service in its entirety and give you some insights on how you can maximize all the tools available both on our members website and also our support service that you can use to help yourself when you're making those decisions on whether to invest in the markets right now and if yes uh, when to buy uh, what stocks to buy and when to sell and hold all that sort of stuff and to use all the tools available and we know that um, not everyone uses every tool that uh, fat profits provides and it's available so hopefully from today's session we can educate every one of you today and you walk away uh, from this webinar a bit more informed uh, and you can start to use some of the other tools available which you may or may not know exist or may not be using it to its full uh, potential. So please um, have your pens and papers handy if you want to make some notes. Uh, we will make the recording available as well if you want to re-watch this later on. Um, and of course if you do have any questions you can always call us at the end of the webinar to clarify anything. So hopefully you can get some ideas from this today. Uh, now before we get started, um, just our usual housekeeping, all our presentations from Fat Profits are general in nature. We don't uh, provide personal advice as we are not financial planners or advisors. And if you're looking for that, please see one of those. And also past performance is no indicator of future performance. Uh, we'll make it as interactive as we can. So if you have questions throughout the presentation, uh, please don't be shy. We're happy to answer those questions throughout and we will take you into the website today as well. So certainly there'll be plenty of back and forward uh, and we're more than happy to take those questions. So first, before we get involved with the details, um, as the title says, maximizing your membership with us, um, We'll do a quick little bit of history lesson just so, I mean, some of you might be new members to the service or otherwise. So just a bit of a history lesson. I mean, Angus, as you can see, is uh, on the screen now. Angus is our CEO, Angus Geddes. Um, he's uh, also a fund manager. He opened the business back in 2000. So we've been around for 22 years. Uh, we are based in Sydney, head office in Market Street, just close to Darling Harbour. We also have other offices around the globe, including UK, uh, Auckland, and Angus also being the, the fund manager, manages part of our wealth management division, where uh, Richard, who's on the webinar today, he'll talk uh, shortly about how that works. So if you have questions on that, uh, Richard will help uh, with that. Um, so as you know, we're, we're the stock market research firm and we provide that research to you, self-managed investors, self-guided investors and you can help yourself with some tools. Um, now when we first started back in 2000 we didn't have all these tools that we we're going to show you today. Uh, we used to just pretty much do one email a week. Uh, <laughs> this is going back many many years ago. Um, I first joined the business back in 2009 and by then the business had evolved a little bit further. Uh, but we used to do one email a week uh, about four or five stocks per week um, and, and a couple of other um, opportunities with the portfolio. Um, and that was the service back in the day, but now obviously we've evolved and made some changes. Um, also looking at um, David, and most of you would, would hear from David on, a, on the Friday podcast which he does with Angus. He's our mining analyst, uh, he's also a geologist. Uh, he's worked in uh, the business for 11 years. Uh, and prior to that, he'd worked with Colonial, um, Suncorp and, and plenty of other organizations. So he's very well experienced and uh, all the mining recommendations from our team come from, from David and, and his team directly. So that's a bit of background there. Now, one of the things we'll look at today is all the features available with the service and how you can use them to your advantage. 
Um, so the first thing first is, as you would know, um, you get the daily fat chat every morning, um, Monday to Friday, and that's the morning email. Um, now most of you would know, but in case you don't, um, Angus gets up at 5 a.m. every day. Uh, I, I know it's pretty tough for most people, but he does. And he, he starts looking at the, the US markets and what's happened overnight, and then he starts writing up uh, the daily email. Uh, and I'm sure most of you would agree that's quite a long email. Uh, some like it to the extent that it's very detailed, something it's, it's too long and I can't cope up with that. But the idea behind that daily email is so you can read uh, as much as you want or as little as you want and it covers the, the four points. Uh, then you've got the weekly reports, um, depending on your subscription level, buy, hold and sell recommendations each week, which comes on our website. You've got the members webinar, which we do every Thursday at 12 p.m. Sydney time, live uh, in the studio, but also recorded, which you can replay. We do the fat wrap on a Friday, uh, which covers the highlights of the week. Uh, the income portfolios, we're going to go into that today a little bit further and dive into how it works and how you can use that. Uh, we've, of course, got an account manager associated with your service, uh, so you can speak to them throughout the year. And we also got a new product uh, we've just launched uh, recently. I'll talk about that towards the end of today. And finally, we also have midweek alerts, which we send out. So I'll go through all of these points um, one by one so you understand how it all works. Let's go with the first one the daily fat chat. Um, so Angus, as I mentioned, writes all that to you every day, market direction, views on certain sectors, uh, macro as to what's going on in the globe. As, as you know, at the moment, as an example, he's talking about um, having a bit, a bit more cash than usual, uh, as he believes the market will uh, have another leg down in the coming months. Um, so that's market direction that he's providing to you. Uh, straight from the fund manager of our business, uh, letting you know how he's doing with his funds and also where he sees the opportunities and risks in the market. So that comes to you every day. Now, just to take you into the website and I'll show you, um, and most of you would have your password. If you haven't logged in to the website for some time, um, this will be a good refresher. But when you log into the site, you'll see the members homepage, and then you've got the, the outlook for the year, wealth management, which Richard will talk about shortly, our listed funds, then you've got your profile where you can you know, reset your password or do a few things, there is a user guide, etc. cetera. Uh, when you scroll down, you see our research products, you've got the four products that we publish, and I'll, I'll talk about that in, in a moment. But the daily fat chat first, and if you, it's also, in your inbox every day, but you can read it through the website as well. So if you click the daily fact chat, it just brings out uh, the, the, the email. So that's, for example, uh, how it looks like uh, for the moment, talks about all that. So it starts with US always, and then you scroll down and you can read Australia, uh, followed by Asia and then UK. So some of our members uh, straight away go from US to Australia and that's it, they're done. And that's fine, uh, while others like to read the whole lot. So uh, that's the first thing, and it's available on the website just there. Moving on to the second part of the service, which is your weekly reports, uh, buy, sell, or hold recommendations. Uh, and that comes for all the four products. Um, and I'll go back into the website now just to show you. Uh, so the Australian Equities is our flagship product covers the ASX in particular, but also has a flavor of New Zealand and a little bit of Asia as well. So it does cover bits and pieces from that market, but the main um, meat of the sandwich, if you like, is, is Australia. So the latest weekly report, if you click that, it takes you straight into the recent report, um, gives you typically anywhere between three to six stocks per week. Um, so recently we had a Bank of Queensland. It's a core stock, which means it's a, it's a blue chip company, uh, medium risk and B's for buy. Um, got a little bit of commentary and then you can click the full report by, by clicking read more. And uh, then you've got Rio uh, as a buy, APA Group as a buy, Stockland and Best in Global Food. And you can just simply read 
more by clicking that button. Pulls up a full report uh, and also has, if you want to know more about this company, BFC as an example, you can simply click that plus sign there, snapshot, tells you who this company is, what they do, and their market cap, which you can clearly see is quite a small uh, speculative, hence it's a speculative buy. And if you minimize that, it just brings it back. And then you can read the detailed report, uh, which we do suggest because obviously you do want to make sure that this ticks your boxes uh, before you buy the stock. And always at the bottom of every report, uh, then we have a recommendation. Uh, and we are suggesting in this case, for example, that it is a small cap stock. It should be regarded as a high risk exposure. And we suggest our members remain watchful and buy into the dips um, as an example. So that's all in that fundamental report. And we do suggest make sure you read it before you go ahead and pull the trigger. Um, so that's the second part of our service. Then moving forward to the next part is you have your Friday fat wrap. And each Friday you get a, an email, uh, which I'll go back to the members homepage. And then if you go to daily fat chat, just below that you see the Friday fat wrap. So you click that, um, oh, in this case we've got an error. Okay, apologies, uh, some technical issue there. But the Friday fat wrap essentially is a, uh, a wrap up of any highlights uh, for that week. And usually it starts with a quick summary, uh, a funky little picture, uh, we always try to make them a little bit different and then uh, one stock per report so each of the four reports that we have um, so that's usually quite informative uh, it also has a recording of the webinar um, so if you've missed out on the uh, webinar earlier in the week you can replay that as well now just to come back to the reports um, now you might have if you're an ASX investor you might have the Australian equities report and you might have the mining report, and that probably is enough for an ASX investor. If you're doing overseas investing as well, then you might have a subscription to Global Equities, which covers the US, UK, uh, sorry, Europe and Asia. And then we have a UK equities for that as well. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just take you through a couple more um, key areas of our service. So if you go to the Australian equities report, and you click on new recommendations, it will take you to a table of all our recent buys, sells and holds, starting with the latest ones at the top. So if you see APA at the top, uh, that simply means uh, that was reviewed recently on the 2nd of August, followed by the others. And what you can do is you can sort them through many different ways. So if you wanna sort them through uh, pricing so you can click that and go I want the cheapest ones to come at the top um, so that just sorts that that way or reverse if you click that again it brings the most expensive stocks in terms of price at the top um, so that's one way to sort them another way if you want to just do it by date uh, you can just do it that way and if you want to read that particular stock so you you can click the the link on the right hand side and that takes you straight back to that report so this is quite a good one. We know members like it because it gives you a summary of all the stocks which have recently uh, been recommended as a buy. Uh, you can also see some sell halves, which we've done recently. SH is sell half, which we did recently for Hub24. And then you see Blackmores and, and the list goes on. So this will help you um, navigate through the latest recommendations. Another part of the service, if you go back to the left here, is the past recommendations. And this is also quite important for you to know if we sold anything recently. So when you click that, it brings you to all the recent sell recommendations. So everything we sell pops into this uh, table. So Hub24, you can see was a recent sell uh, and it tells you the initial buy, the date it was bought, the price it was sold at and the return. And then it, you summarize that in an annualized return. Uh, and then Blackmores, uh, which wasn't the best, but we, we locked in some profits. As you may have noticed recently, we've locked in some more profits, uh, mainly because we're just freeing up a bit of cash for further uh, buying opportunities down the road. So all of this is available here. You can see all the recent recommendations on sell. Um, and look, typically we don't get all of them right, and we're very open about it, as you know, 
uh, typically we get about seven out of ten right and three are losers seven are winners and look obviously we try and improve that as much as we can but uh, you know we, we tend to be reasonably happy with the seven out of ten outcome and I'm sure most people if they can get that they'll be pretty happy with that uh, the next part of the service is midweek alerts and this is another tool we've recently introduced about last year um, and what it is is if a stock has gone up or down by 10% on a given day because of a price sensitive announcement we would then send you an email with an alert stating that there is something happened to this stock and we want you to be aware of this so for example uh, recently we sent out a, an alert on Orica uh, which was down just close to 10% on the day because they came out of a trading halt and they've announced a successful uh, share uh, uh, placement uh, at a reduced discounted price so we just wanted all our members to be aware of this this will be covered in in the next week's report and this was emailed to you prior to that we had premium PPS uh, which jumped 10% on a day uh, because of their um, announcement on special dividends and a payout and a share buyback. So it's a very sh quick short email, just looks like this and gets emailed if we see a price sensitive announcement. Um, and, and we've heard feedback recently that members appreciate that because it alerts them to any announcements because you may be out and about. Um, so it is another part of the service. Uh, the next one I want to take you to which is probably uh, just as important if not the most important um, uh, for retirees or self-funded um, uh, and self-managed investors is this income report. Now just to clarify this, uh, this is updated each quarter. So the last update you can see is June 7th, prior to that February and then October last year and so on. So every quarter we update an income report. What's an income report, you might ask, if you haven't heard of this, uh, I'll just click the read more and go into it. So this income report is firstly a summary of what's happened in the last quarter um, in the Australian market. Uh, however, the key thing is we maintain a hypothetical income portfolio, uh, which looks like this. And you can find that on your website. Uh, this portfolio ha was introduced 10 years ago in 2012 and it's got a basket of uh, currently got of 22 stocks out of the top 200 and out of those 22 stocks the goal is is to collect a decent dividend return uh, between five and six percent a year and also grow at five to ten percent a year on top of that that's the goal um, and so far we've been able to achieve that in fact a little bit more than that um, and if you look at the bottom right here you will notice that the current running uh, annualized return on this portfolio is sitting at 17.1 percent since inception so that's the running rate obviously changes from one quarter to the next and we update that here uh, but that's a pretty healthy return uh, however this is assuming that you bought it all of course 10 years ago and you bought all the stocks when we told you to and, and you sold some when we told you to sell so this is obviously under that presumption however of course um, that's one way for us to measure it from inception till today and it, it keeps changing from one quarter to the next and right below this you will find a, an income composition table which shows you the names of the stocks in a little bit more clarity and you'll notice the financials on the left, you'll notice the industrials in the middle, and then property stocks on the at the bottom. And then it shows you the dividends per share uh, for each stocks. And then you can see the percentage dividends associated with each stock. And on the right hand side, the fully franked uh, or unfranked nature of this. So I'll just take you back to uh, the presentation because it might be easier for you to to see this, uh, let's just jump into the portfolio. In fact, here we are. Uh, this is a bit hard to read, but I will show you this one might be easier to read. And let us know if you can if you can read it. Um, and this table shows you the percentage 
yield per stock. And this is very important for you to know, of course, uh, as an investor, is what are the best stocks that I can find out of this? So there's two options, really. The first option is some members follow this portfolio um, to the dot, and they mirror this in their portfolio themselves. There's 22 stocks at the moment. It might change from next quarter, might be one or two up or down. Now, if you did that to the point from day dot till today, then that would be your return. Um, if you look at the, the forecast, uh, the gross yield forecasted for financial year 23, we're looking at 6.6% gross yield. That's what we're expecting from this portfolio. Now, some of these stocks are forecast at a higher rate. You can see Nine Entertainment, 10%. Uh, BHP is forecasted at 12%, some of the others are looking at 8-9%, um, and some are lower. So you can cherry pick the ones that you think will suit you, um, which is what I think some of the members definitely do as well. Uh, so let us know if, if you think this is useful, uh, especially if, if you're targeting blue chip stocks, but we know that speaking to members that this is quite a popular tool. Uh, that members enjoy. Now, can I take a question here? We've got a couple of questions. Um, so first question from Mel, it says, can I confirm that each cell is included in an email to the members, similar to a midweek alert and not simply added to the past recommendations? Thanks. Mel, that is correct. So yes, I can confirm. Then every time we uh, do a cell recommendation, uh, that is emailed to you as well as an alert so you don't miss out completely and you would have noticed that recently when we did a sell on hub 24 which was uh, only a few days ago uh, we did send an alert uh, email to say uh, we have sold this stock so yes uh, we do and this is just mainly to notify you uh, because it can be easily uh, forgotten um, the next question we've got is from Reg, is saying, how do I access your gold share recommendations? Thank you, Reg. Um, so the way to do it is if you go to the mining report, because obviously the mining report covers all the mining stocks, and then you go to the new recommendations tab, and then you come down to the stocks here, and then you will notice all the mining buy recommendations. So you will then have to go into um, the names of the companies and say, okay, which ones are the gold companies? So, for example, Navare Minerals, NML, that's a gold. Uh, Nexus, that's another gold. Uh, and then the list goes on. Alkane, that's gold. And then you got gold, wallet, et cetera. So then you can click on just to read the full report, and that will take you to the, the fundamental analysis. Um, so that's how you can, you can find that. Okay, uh, moving on now to, uh, before we, cover a few more details. I'll pass it on to Richard now, who will talk about the wealth management part of our business. Now, some of you would know that we do manage uh, money, uh, and Angus being the fund manager. Uh, but Richard, please explain, in case members are not fully aware of how the wealth management side of things work, uh, and if they can also benefit from having access to this opportunity where we can manage some money if they wish to. Sure, thanks, Roger. So Fat Profits Wealth Management, we offer what we refer to as SMAs or separately managed accounts, which are a basket of stocks selected by the portfolio manager, and in this case being Fat Profits. An SMA can consist of anywhere between 20 and 40 different stocks. These days it's closer to 30. The investment manager will then actively and professionally manage the portfolio while applying weightings to the stocks in the model. And the weightings are in relation to a sector weighting, so uh, materials or energy or consumer services. The manager then has discretion to buy stocks, sell stocks, add new stocks, and change the weightings of the stocks in the portfolio on behalf of the investor while always adhering to the product disclosure statement and the mandate. Just on that last point, just be aware that, that, that you are giving away your investment decision process and we are taking advantage of opportunities as they arise in the marketplace. 
Next slide, thanks. Thank you. So with respect to the SMA's attributes, other advantages, well, the first we've already discussed, the portfolio is professionally managed. Investors receive dividends in franking credits in much the same way you currently receive your dividend or franking credit. You do have an option to reinvest that dividend back into the model, or you can take the dividend as cash. Full transparency, as investors can view their shares and performance at any time, and we do that via a platform. So these assets, these SMAs, sit on a platform, and you'll have a login, and you'll see your model portfolio, and you can drill down and see what we've done within that model portfolio. So by drilling down, you may see that you're holding a thousand units of XYZ, and you'll see that we've paid a certain price for that particular stock. And you'll see the current share price of that stock. And then subsequently, you'll know whether you've made a profit or a loss. So it's very, very transparent. The other advantage of an SMA is by its sheer number of stocks within each model, and somewhere between 20 and 40, but 30 these days, diversification is achieved by having that number of stocks within the model. Getting back to the tax platform, or getting back to the platform, I beg your pardon, the platform provides tax reporting and end of financial year tax statements, an all-encompassing comprehensive tax statement. These last two points really explain the difference between a managed fund and a separately managed account. So investors avoid tax liabilities that may exist in a unitized managed account. Now, a unitized managed account is a managed fund. The tax position is unaffected by other investors as an individual cost base is established for each investor. That's an attribute of a self of a of an SMA. For example, the difference between my SMA and your SMA may be the dollar value that I've invested into the model, but I can guarantee you, or with with a lot of certainty, the main difference will be the cost base because I've invested, for example, over eighteen months ago, whereas if you buy today your cost base will be as at today. And this goes back to the transparency that you can see. You know, you can see the model, you can see the stocks, you can see your cost base. This is not the type of thing that you have, have with inside a managed fund. This is the, these are the attributes of an SMA. Next slide, thanks. So typically who suits these types of products? Well, we're taking away the investment uh, decision process, so we're freeing up time. So time poor uh, and those who don't uh, have the time to manage their portfolio. Investors who lack the experience to choose shares suitable for their situation. Investors who are looking for diversification. Older or, or younger investors who don't want the stress of managing their own portfolio. Operators of an SMSF investors who look to take control of their retail superannuation. Now that is an option. It's a little bit uh, limited, but we can discuss that at a later date, but the retail superannuation can take advantage of these, SMS, these SMAs. And finally, investors with an SMSF that is in pension phase, as with the SMA, you receive the tax benefits. Will you be ready? More and more members I'm talking to are taking advantage of the SMAs and they're doing it in conjunction with the research reports. So this is a complement. This is something to consider as complementing your current situation. In the bulk of all of my new customers to the wealth management area are existing uh, fat profits customers who have subscriptions and they are using their subscriptions and they are using SMAs. So this is a complement for, uh, for the current service that you've got. The other thing I'm noticing is that members are setting up 
these accounts for when they are ready to invest. And setting up an account is very straightforward. Once you set, set up the account, you've got complete control over your investment. Now, admittedly, you don't have control over the shares that we're buying with inside the model, but you do have control of when you wish to invest. And, you know, we're, we're navigating some, some rocky roads of late. That's, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of members saying, look, I like the idea of an SMA. I'm not sure whether now's the right time. And I say, I understand. But what I do say to, you, to them is if you are looking to invest, let's get the paperwork out of the way. It costs nothing to do so. Let's set it up. The last point is you can add more money to these SMAs once you've initialised the, the first investment and you can withdraw and you can liquidate. These, these SMAs are as liquid as the underlying and the underlying are shares that are traded on exchanges. So uh, the other point that I, I'd like to add with respect to this is the platform is incredibly flexible. I've shown, we've spoken about its transparency, but the platform allows you to add, once you've made your initial purchase on say a monthly basis, uh, to your SMA and you can automate it in a way that it can take money from an external bank account. So think of it as a savings plan, which is which is great. But the other thing you should be uh, thinking of it is, is a method to create a dollar cost averaging strategy. And I know if you've been listening to Roger recently or to any of us, we've been talking about dollar cost averaging it's an incredibly powerful tool and it's, it, it takes the worry out of, well, it's, it smooths the peaks and the troughs in, in what is otherwise a very turbulent market. So that's it from me, so sure yeah. and sweet, unless you have any questions. Richard, there's a couple of questions coming in. I think members are, are curious to, to know a few things. So first question from Cathy saying, what's the minimum investment required in these models? On the domestic, they're twenty-five thousand dollars. On the global, it's up to fifty thousand. Okay. But once Great. once that once that minimum investment is made, incremental uh, additions are a thousand dollars. Okay. What I'll do is I'll take a couple more questions, but in the meantime, I'll, I'll just put up a uh, an inquiry question there. So if you do have questions or you're interested in that. Just make your selection. We can get back to you one on one and we can provide you the details, but I'll continue to take some questions in the meantime. So the other question is, uh, Jane said, what's the cost of wealth management service? So it costs nothing to set up an account. Uh, we will charge you a fee based on the amount of money you've invested with us and typically up to $250,000, it's 1.805%. So it's it's we're, we're, we're making money on the amount of money that you've invested. And obviously uh, we want you to make more money because we're generating more fees as a result. Yep, okay. And the last question on this before we move on to some other topics from Reg is saying, the last financial year was tough for investors. How did your portfolio models perform in the last financial year? Look, we're only as good as our last quarter. We, we performed, um, in terms of, of the last financial year, we beat the, the benchmark on two of the models and we were underwater on the other two. But there's no, I, I would say, uh, you know, we, we have, all of the models fell in the, over, over the 12 month period. However, I would like talking to customers that I've got, have got a time horizon at least three to five years. And if you want to talk to three about three and five year time horizons, um, we've, we're all positive and we're all beating all benchmarks. So, and and the benchmark uh, we can discuss at a later date. But look, the, it's a, they're great questions. Um, but what I'd like to do is have the opportunity to talk to you directly um, to go into it in more depth, and I can send you uh, all of the the performance figures and all of the fees in a fact sheet. Yeah, excellent. What I'd suggest is for, for those of you, and I can see quite a few people have um, uh, clicked on certain options, 
probably the best thing to do is um, get that information out to you. You can look at the performance over the last year, five years, 10 years, the fees, etc. And then once that all makes sense to you, then you guys can connect and open that account. It's, it's free to open and it, it doesn't cost anything. And then if you feel like in, in two, three months or whenever you're ready, to maybe invest some money into one of those models, then you, you can do so. Right, Richard, would that be a good way to go about it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's like I said, this is the strategy that, that I'm seeing a lot of our members doing right now. They're saying, look, I'm getting ready to, for when I'm ready to invest. And yeah. doing so, it just means opening up uh, a, a wealth management platform. Uh, that 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 is, well, the only, the only cost associated with that is your time. Um, so, but there's no there's no dollar cost as as a result. There's no requirement uh, to get any to get into any particular investment at any time. The people are just positioning them themselves for when they think it's comfortable to get into the market. Yep, absolutely. All right, so we'll we'll move forward. There's a couple more questions coming in, so I'll just park that for a second. I'll come back to those questions, guys, in a moment. We'll just move back to the research uh, service because I know a few people have just joined a bit later um, so I'll come back to those in a moment so going back to the research subscription service that you have I do want to point out a couple more things um, there is another tool which we, I forgot to show earlier is there is a search button here on your website now for example you might say okay I want to I want to read about a particular stock or I want to find out fat profits view on a particular stock, whatever that might be. Let's say it's, I don't know, it's Amcor, just for example's sake. So you just type in the name of the stock and, and hit the search button and that will it'll bring up the report. So that's a shortcut. And it brings up always the latest report first. So you can see May 17th and then you can see any previous midweek alerts or any previous reports go back down. So then you can just click on that. It'll take you straight to the, the report and you can read and it says a hold, that's, that was the recommendation, and you can, you can read the full fundamental analysis. That's one thing I forgot to show earlier. Another thing which, we're well, just on a bit of a fun note, <laughs> we recently added uh, our pictures in case you want to put some faces to the names. Uh, if you go to our public website, fatprofits.com.au, and you go to about uh, our team, uh, you'll be able to see some some faces of our people, uh, you know, some of the seniors, I suppose, Angus, you've got Patrick, our COO Angus obviously is, you can Google him anyway. David, uh, we talked about Andrew, etc. Some of our analysts. Uh, you've got Richard, obviously he's on the call today. Simon, uh, our fund manager as well. Then you've got myself and and my team with the client services. Uh, some of the people um, who obviously speak to you probably over the phone over due course. And then we've got some uh, of our back end team accounting and marketing. So. Uh, all up, you know, there, there's a few people from our team and uh, we've recently added some pictures, so feel free to uh, go and read some information on those as well if you want to. Uh, but moving forward now, back to the uh, presentation, I will show a few more things because this is uh, just as important. I think Stephen had a question earlier or a comment about uh, sale recommendations because it's very important uh, as an investor not only to buy good quality companies, uh, hopefully at the right time, but also knowing when to sell. Now we try and help with that, of course, uh, when the timing is right. Uh, and keeping in mind, we're medium to long-term investors, so we're not going to sell stocks on a weekly or monthly basis, but we do sell case by case when we see some concerns on a particular stock or a sector or maybe general market. So these are some recent sell recommendations, just in an easy table uh, with Hub being the latest. Uh, obviously, that took the cream of the, the crop, uh, but quite a few good ones in there. But look, we do get a few wrong, as we talked about earlier, uh, but general success rate is 7 out of 10 on the research uh, side, I think. So that's uh, just to keep an eye on it. Uh, now I'm going to talk a little bit about some stocks as well today because, you know, no presentation goes without talking about a few stocks. Uh, so if you are in the hunt and looking for a few opportunities in this earning season in Australia, which has just started, uh, there is a number of companies which are now starting to report their earnings. Uh, but what we've done today in this webinar is we've broken down some of our recommendations in sectors. So you can have a look at these sectors piece by piece and look at the, the main stocks in each of our sectors. So this might help you narrow it down, for example. So let's start with iron ore first. 
Um, iron ore, uh, you know, it's it's an important part of our, you know, uh, mining industry, of course. And we've got the three big companies: BHP, Rio, and Fortescue. Uh, these are the initial time, you know, percentages of success rate so far, uh, and the times that we held these stocks for. Just to give you one example today, I'm in Fortescue. Happy to share. We're open, you know, if we were up or down on a stock, but we are down a little bit on this stock. So we bought it uh, last year at $20.53, as you can see there. Uh, since then, we have bought it a few more times, just a dollar cost average, as Richard mentioned earlier. So our average on this stock at the moment is somewhere around $17. Uh, if you take that into account, we're probably a bit ahead, but also we've collected dividends. The main purpose of these companies, the iron ore companies, is to collect high quality dividends. And they've been paying in the vicinity of somewhere between 8 to 10% uh, per year, which is obviously very good. Uh, so we're happy to hold these companies, dollar cost average them over time, and we will be holding them for a, a reasonably long time until things change, whether it's China or something else. So currently, uh, we've got to buy an all three at the moment. Next sector is we've got lithium, nickel, and copper. We sort of combine that into one uh, sector. And this is quite a, a good one at the moment. Um, all the stocks are up, are up some more than the others. Uh, all chem, uh, which form Oro Cobra, that really takes the cake, but all of them seem to be heading in the right direction. Short term, yeah, some of them pull back. We'll talk about maybe a couple today. Uh, Mincor, uh, that's a new nickel producer. Um, and the key is, I think one member mentioned earlier, um, is, is the key is to get early into these stocks. And Mincor is another example where we want to get in early before they start becoming a producer. So if you look at this chart here, we've got in a 74 and a half cents sort of July uh, of 2021. Uh, we knew they were on the cusp of production and then now they've just become a producer in June this year. Uh, so leading up to that, there was a series of announcements on their assay results, their drilling announcements, and we bought it multiple times along the way. Uh, it had gone as high as $2.75, but recently with the market pullback, it has pulled back but we've gone back in as a buyer. So look, we will be holding these type of companies for a long time, uh, probably between three to five years, uh, and we'll buy the dips along the way. And we always want to get in early, that's the key. So if you still have a looking at these stocks, well, either you can look at Mincor today as a buy, or another stock you can look at as an advanced explorer is Essential Metals. Uh, they're into lithium, nickel, and copper. Um, still at an advanced stage of exploration. Uh, the production is still some time away, uh, has had a reasonably good run off late, um, and in the last one year or so ha is up around five times. Uh, but still at just under 50 cents, we think there's plenty of upside potential here. So that's another one you can sort of look at. Um, before I get on to the next sector, I've just got a couple of comments, uh, Mel's, and thanks Roger. That's an excellent idea, selection by sector. Okay, thank you, Mel, appreciate that. Uh, we do think it's, it's, it's important for you to know what sectors you're light on and where you're a bit heavy on. Uh, the next one is energy. And, and this is something we're uh, quite keen on at the moment. Uh, you know, we've got the three stocks there. I think there's used to be all search as well, but that's merged now with Santos. Uh, so Santos is one down, uh, we're down on from its initial buy, but uh, if you look at our, average would probably be ahead, but we always count from an initial buy. Woodside, uh, we're up, uh, and Whitehaven Coal is a recent entry. So just to touch on Whitehaven Coal briefly, and I know a lot of our members have bought this stock, so hence it's kind of important to you. Um, we bought in last year $2, um, and obviously bought it a few more times since. Recently, we did a half sell, locking in some profits um, around 483. The stock did pull back in the short term. We saw a couple of concerns and just sort of protected the capital a little bit. Uh, but since then, we've seen coal price jump a bit further higher. And, you know, at least we're keeping the other half for further growth. Uh, so at the moment, it's around above $6. We're happy to hold it, but we might look at it in the in the coming months uh, and revisit the strategy and see whether it's at. Uh, but we're always looking at these stock ratings. So we move them from buy when they're undervalued, hold to where we think it's fair value, and sell when we see some concerns or if it's overvalued. So that's just to fill you in with that. Next sector is gold. And that's another sector we do believe everyone should have one or two stocks, especially in this inflationary environment. It's a bit of a hedge. 
And we've got a number of stocks in gold. And uh, the best stock certainly was Chalice Mining. Uh, last year was up around 8,000%, which is crazy. Uh, I know a few members have made a, an absolute killing, but obviously we can't buy all of them. Uh, but Northern Star and Evolution Mining, uh, you might be holding in your portfolio, depending on when you bought them, but we've, we've had them for 10 years plus. Again, buying them very early when they're junior explorers, holding them for a long time, riding the waves, that's the key, uh, but also some juniors here as well. But not all of them, are, of course, ahead, a couple of them in the red, but generally speaking, look, if you hold long enough, gold is a good commodity to have in your portfolio. One of the stocks we can talk about is Gold Road, and that's a sort of recent buy, a, a new um, a producer, uh, two years of production so far, and still looking very good. They're always on track, always on within budget, uh, and hit the numbers pretty consistently. Uh, they're already paying dividends uh, to shareholders, which is very rare for a new producer, so their financial health is good and pretty strong management. So we do think if you're looking at a good quality gold company, Gold Road is one of them which you can add to your portfolio. Or uh, one more we can talk about today is Red 5. I think I saw a question earlier. Oh yeah, this was from Reg. Uh, it said in the mining space, how do you rate Red 5? So Reg, just on cue, uh, <laughs> we, we read your mind. But Red 5, uh, look, just if you don't know this company, they're a, a junior producer of gold. Um, but they've added a brand new mine to their portfolio, which is called King of the Hills in Western Australia. Huge deposit, one of the top 10 deposits in Australia, and they're uh, bidding to become one of the top 10 gold producers over the coming years. Now, recently they've gone into production in June, and they'll be ramping that over the next eight to 10 months, when, when they start really producing the, the, the absolute max capacity. So we do think there's a huge potential with this mine. Still early days, currently trading at 28 to 30 cents a share. Uh, our forecast in this stock, look, if you've got sort of three to four years in mind, uh, anything is possible with this stock. We, we, were, you know, we are looking at sort of $1.50 to $2 we're targeting with this stock. And many of our members have got in, got in here between 15 to 20 cents. Um, so this is a speculative stock. But if you have patience and you're willing to write it out, we do see some blue skies ahead. So that's something to keep in mind, an eye on. And, and red, yes, we do rate this quite high uh, in our gold portfolio. Our next uh, sector is industrials. Uh, and look, there's a lot of stocks in the portfolio here. Uh, we're just highlighting a few today, but there's more actually on our website. Uh, but a few to name, some on the hold. APA, um, we'll probably talk about it in a moment. Elders is quite a quality company. Look, New Farm has been a disappointing over time, but short-term momentum is good, so we're happy with that for the short term. Uh, nine and 10 will be quite good. Adore Beauty has been a, not been a great one, but all in all, look, depending on uh, which ones you pick, you're probably ahead in general. Uh, but one stuff we can certainly talk about today is APA Group, which is an energy provider, or the biggest energy company infrastructure um, in Australia. And we got in there last year at $9.56, as you can see there in that little channel, it was trending down. And it did go down a little bit further before we bought it again. But in the last six months or so, even though the markets have been down, this has been quite a good defensive stock they pay a good dividend of five to six percent and has been rising. Now it's touched twelve dollars. So we're up around, I don't know, twenty-five percent or something, uh, plus dividends in, in less than twelve months. So pretty good out outcome, all things considered. Uh, but we can still consider that with volatile markets ahead. Another stock which has done extremely well over a long period is uh, the agricultural. Uh, and soft commodities player. Uh, they're into beef and all, a lot of other soft commodities. Um, and they are by far the best performer in their category, elders. Um, all in all, long term has been a fantastic performer. Uh, short term, it has pulled back. So we do think this is another stock you can consider for yourself. Uh, the next category is telcos. And you've got uh, uh, the three uh, typical stocks. Telstra, I think most people have that in the portfolio for dividends. It's not really what you'd consider as a growth stock, uh, but a defensive stock uh, with good quality dividends. 
Spark, New Zealand, and that's been a good performer for us. TPG uh, has not performed yet, but uh, we're expecting it to, to shine in the coming years. Spark, just a quick uh, snapshot here. Uh, they are the biggest telco in New Zealand, and they're listed on New Zealand and Australia. And you can see on the charts, long term, it's been growing at 15 to 20% per year uh, and paying dividends of around 5% a year on top. So I guess you, you take that uh, for a long-term investment. If you can get around 20% a year uh, for five, 10 years consistently, well, that's been a, a performance Spark has been able to produce. And we're happy with that. Uh, we haven't sold it. Uh, we just collect these returns and just put that in the, on the side and it's a hold at the moment. Um, financial technology, next sector. Uh, we've sold one of the stocks, Mainstream, that's out of the portfolio now. Uh, some of you might remember this from last year. Uh, that was a good one. Hub, we recently sold half off, as we talked about previously. The other two still buys. Um, so just a quick one on, on Hub. Uh, again, getting in early is the key, and that's we can't stress that enough. Get into a stock early, hold it for a long period. If the fundamentals um, stack up, you will make money. And this has been a, an outstanding performance, no doubt about that. Um, but it's currently a hold. And premium is another one we, we're maintaining a buy on. We expect this to now rise from 64 cents. And uh, there's a lot, lot of upside here. So if you want to check out one stock, you can type premium in the website in the search and, and read the detailed report. Next one is fast food. And, and I'm sure most of you know these two stocks by now because we talk about them quite often. Collins Foods and Domino's Pizza. Collins Food has gone up uh, quite consistently for a long time. Uh, but Domino's Pizza has been another one we've added last year, or about two years ago, sorry. Uh, we've done a half sell already at 105, uh, but we're maintaining the other half, and uh, we've got to buy on Domino's currently. Uh, next one is property sector, and we've got a number of stocks in here. A few on hold, uh, but the rest on buy. So James Hardy would be pretty much of a standout. Borrow, although it looks down, but we've taken a, a pretty big dividend along the way, $2.72. So it's not taking that into account. But all in all, it has been a reasonable outcome from property, uh, but one has to be watchful at the moment. Uh, but one stock we'd probably suggest at the moment is vicinity centers. Uh, they're a top 50 company. Uh, they are in the income portfolio uh, and has now moved past its $2.00 resistance level and and still undervalued compared to pre-COVID. Uh, they do pay five and a half, uh, maybe six percent dividend uh, and it is looking pretty solid even though the market's been volatile. Uh, so fundamentally that's a good one. Uh, and the last couple of sectors now just to round it off is healthcare uh, and Sonic Healthcare. Uh, we've done a half sell on but we're holding the other half, been good. Uh, but we've introduced a brand new stock uh, in that space uh, last month is IDX and that's so far up around 8% in a month so that's okay uh, but Sonic uh, again we've held it for a long time uh, we sold half 39 uh, last year and we kept the other half just to to see how things shape up uh, so if you're holding that at the moment uh, we suggest to probably keep it keep an eye on it and now the next thing we'd probably suggest so look if you can do us a small favor if you guys are happy with the service uh, you know, we do appreciate any feedback online because that's pretty much the world we live in these days. And a lot of our members have gone out of their way and, and added a couple of lines as feedback. And if you can do that, we'll really appreciate it. It's on productreview.com.au. It's an independent website um, and all companies have people put their reviews on there. So we've got 4.1 star rating. We've had a lot of members put up some fantastic reviews or even some proper feedback as well. We take all that on board. Uh, but if you're happy with the service, if we've done good by you and you've made some money and you've educated yourself, we'd appreciate any feedback. Well, some of them have been some funny ones. <laughs> uh, you know, Doug, you can see that there, uh, you know, he says we're the best things in sliced bread and we absolutely cracked in the office when we saw that. <laughs> uh, everyone was um, sending emails to each other saying, look at this review. Uh, so it does make us uh, happy. Uh, we've had some previous fund managers and retired stockbrokers. There's one here, David. He's put some nice little, quite a long review actually, but he was very happy with the service. And Penny, who's also been with us for a long time, uh, she's a quite a big um, supporter of our service, has also put that in. So if you if you don't mind, uh, we'll appreciate that. 
Now, uh, we've got a couple of things to add. We've got a new product, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, um, and you probably find that quite interesting. But just to summarize our service, uh, one of the things which separates us from the rest is we are performing at a pretty good rate, close to 18% a year on our Australian equities, the research side. It does save you time, and then I'm sure you'd agree uh, on your research. Um, we are quite experienced, as you've seen Angus and David and the likes. Um, and, and the key thing is we do get more winners than losers. And what people are looking for really is the market direction. Uh, you know, views on the market, guidance on where we think we're going. And that's what we really want to provide on a daily basis. Uh, the other part of our service, which I think is, we get a lot of uh, emails on, is we don't do a lot of marketing like some of our competitors. I'm not going to name anyone, but I think you guys are smart enough to know there's a couple of them out there who bombard you with a lot of emails about other products that you should upsell and subscribe to. We don't do any of that, as you know. So I think you guys would probably appreciate us not <laughs> doing that. And, and we do manage real money, as Richard talked about in wealth management. Uh, so these are a few things that we, we do like. So today, uh, before we take some questions, I know there's a lot of questions coming through and I'll come to that in a moment. Um, the two main parts of our service for you that you have access to right now is a premium membership or the platinum membership. And we've just introduced a new product, which I'm about to explain. Uh, but just to summarize, the premium, you get the daily emails, you get the weekly members-only webinars, you get the Friday Fat Wrap, and you have two reports out of the four. Uh, and most Australian investors have the, the Australian equities and the mining. Uh, plus, you have an account manager you can call or email if you have questions. Uh, the Platinum, which seems to be getting more and more traction these days, uh, that does cover all the reports. Um, so you have international access to US, Asia and Europe as well. And a lot of people are now starting to branch out and look at other markets. Um, so if you're interested in one or the other, you can. Um, so today what we're offering you is actually quite a, a unique um, saving, if you like. Um, and this is something we put together just for our uh, current members as a bit of a one-off. Uh, but here's a special offer. Um, so the normal price, as you can see on our website, is Premium is 1545 for one year, and Platinum is 2590 um, So what we're offering today is if you want to save some money, you know you're going to use us in the future, uh, you might as well um, save some money on this special promotion. And one of the offers we've got is that we've got a three-year promotion on premium. Uh, we, we can bring that rate down to $7.99 a year, and that's 50% off uh, the normal price. Pretty good saving. Or if you wanted to, to do a five-year term, which is probably the best value, um, that we can bring it down to $6.99 a year, and that works out to be $34.99 in total, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, however, the new product we just launched is a, a, some annual portfolio reviews. And this has been in the work for some time, and we're quite, quite happy to announce that if you want uh, your portfolio to be reviewed by a professional team, and we, you can email that portfolio to us, and we can then give it to the analyst, uh, and they will come back with some recommendations. They'll look at your uh, strengths and weaknesses, and the overall weighting of your portfolio, and then we will schedule a half an hour appointment over the phone to conduct that with you together, and we'll give you some recommendations on buy, sell, and hold, and also some general advice on how you can uh, make some modifications. Uh, it is quite a, an important tool and we've started doing that recently and a lot of members have taken that up. Um, so if you're interested in that, we've got a fantastic offer here. Uh, if you take the five years platinum, it only works out to be $7.99 a year and we will add five years of your subscription to your current term. So no matter what time you have available, we will add five years to that and you can instantly get upgraded to Platinum, um, and then you get these annual portfolio reviews, especially with the way the markets are. However, one more option, if you don't want the portfolio reviews, because you think you might be fine without it, for whatever reason, that's fine, uh, then you can simply take the, the three years of Platinum, which works out to be 9.95 a year, without the portfolio review. So both options are available. Uh, what I will do 
is because I know typically and I'm getting some questions now I'll open up the uh, the question here so if you want to register your interest you can email that uh, or you can tick your boxes and we can get back in touch with you and discuss those options and and work that out but the certainly the portfolio review new product that we've launched that might be worth your while given the markets where we're at so what I'll do is while you make your selection, I'll just take a couple of questions here. In fact, uh, one question has come from John. It said, I'm quite interested in the annual portfolio reviews platinum package. Uh, however, I have a self-managed super fund and I also have a personal portfolio. So can you do a review of both of them? Um, so John, thank you for your question. Uh, and yes, we can. So if you're on the platinum service, for that uh, package, which is only $7.99 a year uh, for five years, then yes, we can look at both your portfolios. Uh, it might take a little bit longer, depending on how many stocks you have. Um, and then yes, we can cover that for you, not a problem. Um, so that's fine. Uh, next question is uh, from uh, David saying that I already have about nine months left of my current premium service. And I, if I upgrade to platinum, uh, what happens to my nine months? So the answer to your question is you don't lose the nine months. We simply add the three or five years on top of that. And if you choose the platinum, we simply upgrade you to the platinum as well. So, yep, yeah, okay, we're getting a thumbs up here. That's all good. Uh, next question, I'll take quickly, uh, Richard, we've got a question for you earlier and I'll, I'll just bring you in here. Yep. Uh, Vilas asked a question on wealth management. He said, can he or can they transfer in specie share portfolio for us to manage? Regrettably not. So the, se the separately managed accounts need to start with cash. Um, and look, the, 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 the function with respect to, to uh, like I said, everyone's SMA is identical in terms of its weightings and holdings of shares. It, they differ in obviously the dollar value and and the um, uh, and the um, uh, the cost base. But uh, we you, we need to start these particular facilities with cash. So an instant transfer implies that we're taking on an existing share portfolio, and that wouldn't suit because obviously his percentages may be different from our, our, our percentages. So uh, to keep it all clean and neat, we basically uh, start each of the, the uh, SMAs with cash. Okay, that makes sense, no worries. Look, I'll, I'll close the question now. I think quite a few people have, have selected their options. So if you are done, I'll just close that now. We seem to be getting uh, quite a bit of interest on in the platinum service. And, and I think that would go down well with the portfolio review. So thank you for those of you who've shown interest. We'll get back in touch. Uh, what I'll do is lastly, I'll just go into uh, one more question. Uh, this is regarding CSL. So Reg asked, uh, how do you rate CSL? So at the moment, Reg, that's a stock we are looking at quite closely. Uh, we haven't uh, put a buy recommendation on it for some time, but the team is closely watching the developments there. Um, and if and when it actually becomes a buy, we will send uh, an email uh, with that announcement. So currently just watch that space. Uh, and the last question here is from Matthew saying, is there a way to identify new recommendations? I understand the weekly reports, uh, but quite often there are, okay, sorry, it's quite a long um, question. So the, the answer Matthew is, and I'll just take my, Go, go back to the website. So the, the best way to do it is when we do a new recommendation, uh, a brand new recommendation that is, uh, we would normally announce that in the webinar. Uh, so if, if you want to look for a separation versus a typical buy recommendation, the webinars that we do every Thursday, that's when we definitely announce that this is a brand new stock we just introduced like the IDX we talked about earlier. But other than that, if you do have to log in maybe once a week, we do suggest go into the website and log in so that way you can uh, be aware of any new buys and sells there as well, okay? Um, and look, finally, I think that covers all the questions, uh, but I do think we've got a few comments here. Uh, this is from 
uh, Catherine saying thank you for that webinar. It was quite informative. I didn't know a few things about the website uh, there, so I'll certainly be logging in a bit more frequently. Uh, we've got a comment from Jonathan saying, oh, um, glad to see some faces on the website. Now I know who looks like what. Okay, <laughs> not a problem. Uh, all good. Hopefully we've got a good looking team. Uh, another comment just come in to say, if you have any questions about, uh, oh, sorry, this is a question. Uh, if you've got any questions about particular stocks, can you call in? Yes, you can. Uh, you know, our services is certainly available with the account managers in our Sydney office. So if you do have questions that you need clarity on, please call us. Uh, you know, we, we're available and I'll just bring up the, okay, you can email us as well, info at Fat Profits, but you can call us uh, Monday to Friday, uh, nine to five, and we're happy to answer your questions. So please don't be shy. And I think that's another part of the service with some of our members not using it as often as you should. Um, so please use us as, as much as you need. All right. Okay, well, that brings us to the end of today's webinar. Uh, thank you for your comments, your participation and your questions. Uh, we hope you got some good information. And if you can use all the tools available, uh, we know that you'll be well informed as an investor and hopefully uh, get the best out of our service and the hard work we put in. And we appreciate it. So my name is Roger. Thank you once again for your company. I'll pass it on to Richard for his final words. Thanks very much, Roger. Um, thanks for the opportunity to present. Uh, like I said, we're, we're very keen to talk to anyone about the wealth management products. We've got a team of three, myself, Bill and Patrick, and uh, we look forward to discussing your options and possibly bringing you on as a wealth management customer. Thanks very much. All right, All right bye for now.